Vilcabamba, town of the centenarians. After a quick passage to the city of Loja, we spent four days in this beautiful town. On today's menu, crazy cows, youth springs, national parks, and breathtaking views. From Quito, the way to Vilcabamba passes through the city of Loja. We shortly visited the biggest city in the south of Ecuador, beginning by the beautiful central plaza. Loja was founded as an outpost for the exploration of the Amazon forest on the quest of El Dorado. The monument at the center of the plaza is a reminder of its importance in the history of Ecuador. We also visited the Ripiro Park. On this huge green space, there are different monuments from international inspiration, like an Indian theater and a European castle. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of time to visit the city, and we left as we had to continue towards Vilcabamba. Until the land reform in 1964, the agricultural system of Ecuador was based on latifundios. Those were domains of several thousands of hectares, owned by a single family, at the service of whom worked hundreds of Huasiponjeros, or Arimados, often indigenous Ometis people, who were working without salary against the right to farm a piece of the land. With the reform, land was redistributed, but haciendas still remain. We were warmly welcomed by the descendants of a latifundista from Vilcabamba, in a beautiful hacienda with its own park, horses, and even its own church. We tried to ring the bell with more or less success. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> In the evening, the center plaza of Vilcabamba was full with people coming out of the church. It was the celebrations of the Sagrado Corazon, or Holy Heart. A small band was playing, the crowd assembled, waiting for what I, for myself, did not expect. The Vacas Locas. The celebrations ended with a blues band named Don Metardo with his players, who joyfully closed this event for evening. Vilcabamba is in the province of Loja, the Andean southernmost in Ecuador. For its complex and surrealistic landscape, the province is often compared to a crumbled piece of paper. Papel arrugado in Spanish. This region of Ecuador is where the Cordillera de los Andes is at its lowest altitude in Ecuador, around 2,000 meters, while it reaches 6,000 meters in northern areas. This depression allows ecosystem exchanges between the east and the west of the mountain chain, which are not possible elsewhere. The Podocarpus National Park is a protected area whose highest part is in the Andes of the province of Loja, and lowest part in the Amazon forest in the province of Zamora. We visited the high region situated between the towns of Loja and Milcabamba. From up there, we could observe the Andean Depression. The locals call these areas the Divorce of Waters. It is on the drainage dividing line. Rain falling on the west ends up in the Pacific Ocean, while rain falling on the east after a long trip through the Amazon forest ends up in the Atlantic Ocean. In the park, we walk through an abundant vegetation, 
all the way up to a beautiful viewpoint of the Valley of Vilcabamba. Vilcabamba is well known for the long lives of its inhabitants. It is believed that several centenarians live in the Valley of Longevity, some claiming to be up to 120 years old. The secret of such long lives could be the combination of steadily good weather, healthy and calm lifestyle, and unique spring water. The tradition is that every person visiting Vilcabamba takes a dip in one of the rivers surrounding the town. We were no exception. It is said that bathing in these eternal youth springs helps to live a longer life. We cannot yet confirm its effect, but what we can tell you is that it was freezing cold. Even before the Spanish colonization, the unique conditions of Vilcabamba were recognized by the Incan civilization. Indeed, it was used as a retreat for the Incan royalty and is often referred to as the playground of the Inca. The Mandango Hill, looking over the town, is called La Cara del Inca Dormiente, which means the face of the sleeping Inca, who protects the valley from earthquakes and other natural disasters. We climbed this emblematic hill on a hot, sunny day. The way up was difficult and steep, and the wind took Vincent's hat. But once we made it to the top, the view was totally worth the effort. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's the first of a series we're making that will bring us to the south of Ecuador, the Galapagos Islands, Peru, and then Bolivia. If you want to see the next video we made about Cuenca, where we see the archaeological park, the Caras uh, National Park also, just click here. Or you can also subscribe here and not miss any of the next video. Hasta luego!